Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to you with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Paulin Number no. 1 Mini. Uh, Alright, so grab a coffee, grab a tea, let's start a workout, let's go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from MG7. I was wondering what your opinion on kids slash teens using luxury bags or goods is. Personally, being a college student, I have been saving up for a luxury bag since high school. I would buy it pre-loved. However, I am not sure if this is too showy for someone my age. I also have an old Neverfull that my mom does not use anymore that I could wear. However, I am still concerned about how it will be viewed. What age do you think it is acceptable to start using slash purchasing a luxury bag? This is an awesome, awesome question. And first and foremost, remember that people are going to think what they're going to think, whether you're younger or older. And if you decide to use or purchase a luxury handbag, they might have an idea of the type of person that you are, you know, but ultimately it comes down to your happiness. And if it makes you happy to do that, then by all means, go for it. Now, I personally don't feel that there's an acceptable or an appropriate age to buy or to use luxury goods. And the reason that I say that is because it's really a case by case scenario. It really depends on the household because some households are able to gift their children or give them the opportunity to use expensive or luxury goods at a young age and others do not. You know, so I think it really comes down to how that person carries himself and how they project their personality when they carry that item that really comes off as it being too showy. Of course, there might be people out there uh, that think, okay, you're young, you're using a Louis Vuitton bag, you're using a Chanel bag, automatically they think that maybe you know, you're snobby or whatever the case may be. Like I said before, people will think what they're going to think. But I also know that there's a lot of people that do have, um, that are young, that do have expensive, uh, expensive items or luxury goods, and they are super down to earth. And I don't get that vibe at all. So I think it's more so about how that person was raised or how they were brought up. And um, that's how they could come across as showy and things like that, you know? So those are just my two cents. That's the way that I feel. And uh, like I said before, I don't think that there's a specific age. I don't think that, um, you know, there's uh, there's an appropriate age to, to buy them because some people have the possibility to do that for their children and others do not, you know, and I don't think that if you do have the possibility to have your children enjoy those things at a young age, that they should be shamed in a sense uh, to be able to do that because the parents are able to provide that for their kids, you know? So I don't know, call me crazy. That's the way that I see it, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you feel that there is a certain age that people should be able to buy luxury goods or enjoy them? Or are you just like, you know what? I couldn't care less. Let them do what they want to do. Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. But I will say, rock your mom's handbag. And when you do go to get your first handbag, whether it is pre-loved or you decide to go brand new, major, major congratulations. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Katie G. My first Louis Vuitton bag was a Speedy B25 in Damia Ben. I've since sold it due to the fact that the strap was way too stiff and uncomfortable for me with it being the treated leather. Now I have my eye on the Alma BB in Damia Ben. Do you find that the strap of that bag to be comfortable even though it is the treated leather? I worry it will dig into my shoulder like the Speedy did. Um, all right, so I did bring out the Alma BB in the Damia Ben, so we have a little bit of eye candy. And um, you know, you said it perfectly. When it comes to Damia Ben, I do love the print. You know how I feel about that gorgeous, gorgeous red. But a lot of the bags do end up digging into your shoulder or they dig into your skin and it can be quite uncomfortable. Um, now with that being said, the Alma BB, I actually haven't experienced that. And I think the reason that is, is because it is a smaller handbag, even though the strap that it comes with is, um, is thin, kind of like the, uh, kind of like the Neverfull. And that's the one that I often have the most trouble with. A lot of you know that because it's actually my least used Neverfull because of that same thing, it ends up digging into my skin. So this has the same type of, um, this is a little bit thicker, but I actually don't find this to dig into my skin. I don't find that it ends up um, being too uncomfortable. And like I said before, it could be because the bag itself is pretty small. So if you do end up loading it up, I mean, if you pack this baby to the brim, then I feel that you will be able to feel that weight when you go to use it on your shoulder. I also feel that by being able to use this bag crossbody, it really ends up kind of alleviating that same weight and it doesn't feel as, um, it doesn't feel as uncomfortable if you were to load it up as it would be if you were to use it on your shoulder. So I haven't experienced that. I find it to be very, very comfortable. Well, I shouldn't say very, very comfortable because 
in my opinion, Viketa is very, very comfortable because it's very flexible. So this one is more comfortable than most of the Damier, uh, Damier Ben pieces that I have personally experienced when it comes to Louis Vuitton. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind. If you do end up loading up the bag, you might be able to feel that a little bit more. Uh, but because it is a little bit smaller, and I mean, you can't, um, I feel like you can't carry everything and the kitchen sink in here to a certain extent, to a certain extent, uh, that it won't be, um, it wouldn't be as big a problem as it maybe would have been with the Speedy 25 uh, bandolier in the Dami bin. So that's just my experience. Um, but so far, so good. I think that this is such a cute bag. I also had someone ask if I find that um, this is a classic. I think that the Alma PM is a classic. Um, but I, I love this bag. I think it's great. I think it's super cute, you know, and one thing to know is that when you do go to use it on your shoulder, sometimes because of the shape that it has, it does end up wobbling from side to side. So that might drive you crazy. I know some people find it to be a little bit fussy that that happens or the lock. You'll, you'll definitely end up hearing that. Um, for the most part, I end up keeping my lock off of most of my, uh, most of my speedies. But anyways, I digress. Um, I think it's great. So far, so good. No issues with it being too heavy, but uh, it's definitely a, a matter of um, if you end up carrying just a tad too much in the bag. So hopefully this was able to help, but fantastic question. Next question from Brenda Martinez. Do you plan on adding a giant monogram Louis Vuitton to your collection? The speedy that just launched this month is beautiful. Want to know your thoughts on this giant monogram? Uh, all right, so the Louis Vuitton giant monogram collection that recently launched has become incredibly popular. Um, I definitely wasn't surprised because they offer so many different colors and it's just not limited to handbags. They also have small leather goods. So they have an array of different products to choose from. So I think that's awesome. Um, I don't see myself adding anything to my collection, be it a handbag or a small leather good, just because I find it to be a tad too busy. And a lot of you know that I end up going for something a little bit more understated or classic. Some people might think that I end up going for boring, which is totally fine. I get it. Uh, but that's more my style. Um, and I get the whole idea of having the giant monogram on one side and then you have the regular monogram on the other. Uh, but I would have preferred for it to be a little bit more uniform. So if you had the giant on both sides or if you had that monogram throughout the entire bag instead of one, you know, one side being one way and the other one being that way. Um, I personally think it would have been a little bit better. But um, as I said before, I totally get it. And uh, it adds a really fun twist to the fashion house. It adds a really fun vibe to it. You know, it's not too serious and um, it's not boring or anything like that, you know? So I don't see myself, as I said before, adding anything. Of course, never say never, never say never because I have learned my lesson. Um, out of both of them, I really do like the small leather goods a little bit more because it's not as it's not as big, it's not as intense, and I especially like the Kirigami set. I know that we talked about this collection a couple Minx Mondays ago, and the Kirigami set is just beautiful. I love the khaki, I love the tan that they incorporated with it, and then the black and white monogram. Let me insert a couple pictures. So I'm a fan, I'm a fan, but like I said, I don't see myself adding anything to my collection. But I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this collection. Have you added anything? If you have, let us know in the comment section down below. And um, I know that they're going to be incorporating more of this giant collection uh, within a couple of months. I believe that they have an animal print coming out within those couple of months. Don't quote me on it, I could be wrong. Uh, but like I said, it has become incredibly popular and I'm really hopeful. I'm really hopeful that it does so incredibly well that they decide to, you know, have uh, pieces, whether it's a handbag or a small leather good, of that tan, that beautiful tan, like the, the white and tan monogram, I think is gorgeous, or maybe just the khaki, I don't know, but, but I am absolutely digging it. So fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Julia Noel. How do you care for your Chanel leather bags? I just got my first Chanel, a black single flap jumbo in caviar leather, and I'm not sure how to properly care for it. Is it bad if I get caught in the rain with it? Should I rather take a Louis Vuitton canvas bag out if there's a chance of rain? Uh, all right, so first and foremost, major congratulations on your first Chanel piece. The jumbo single flap is an absolutely beautiful handbag. Um, all right, so how do I care for my Chanel leather bags? I actually don't treat any of my handbags, be it Chanel or any other fashion house. Uh, I truly feel that the oils in your hands end up doing all the work for you. They moisturize the bag. Um, I would have to say that the extent of what I end up doing to them is pretty much if I if I get any type of um, 
dust or what have you, I just pretty much end up using the uh, the dust bag or microfiber cloth to just kind of wipe them off and that's pretty much it. Like I said, I don't really do anything else to them. Um, all right, and as far as being caught in the rain when it comes to caviar leather, um, I have been caught in the rain many, many of times, whether it was a light sprinkle or a full on downpour and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. I know that you said that you got the jumbo single flap. I wanted to have a little bit of eye candy. This is the medium large and the caviar leather. And this guy I have used many, many times. Sometimes when it rains, I do go for my uh, my Louis Vuitton Damien Ben pieces. Other times I go for caviar because as I said before, I haven't had any issues. I haven't had any problems with, you know, cracking or peeling leather or anything like that. I think it looks, uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, and I will have to say that if you do get caught in a downpour, when you do go indoors, all you have to do is just pretty much wipe off the excess water and that's it. Or when you go to store it, make sure it doesn't have any uh, any water uh, left on it. I'm a big fan of caviar leather. I always have been and it's very durable. It's very carefree. And as I said before, you don't have to worry in the type of weather that you're going to be using it in, especially when it comes to the rain because the rain won't end up showing any type of water stains as it would with lambskin or any other type of material. So I think it's great. I've had great success with it. So far, no issues with cracking or peeling or anything like that. Now, as far as treating uh, your leather handbags. Um, I know that some people end up uh, either treating them or moisturizing or conditioning the leather as time goes by. I've heard some people do it maybe once a year or every other year just to ensure that the leather is looking as supple as possible for as long as possible and so that way they don't experience any type of cracking. So it's a matter of personal preference on that front but um, like I said before it's not something that I end up doing and so far I haven't had any issues. So once again major congratulations on your jumbo single flap. I hope that you're enjoying it. Fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Do Wop Shop Gal. So which are the five bags that you gravitate to and wear very often? This is in reference to what we talked about last week. I was saying that I do rotate my handbags, but I have a tendency to reach for five all the time. My apologies for leaving you guys hanging. I, real I realized that I didn't really go into detail, uh, but my top five bags, the first one is, or at the moment I should say, the first one is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Uh, sometimes it's in the monogram, other times it's in the Damien Azor. But let's be honest, the Neverfull is almost always one of my top used bags every single solitary year. You guys know how I feel about that bag. The other one is the Speedy Bandolier 25 in the monogram canvas, this guy right there, because it is very, very convenient. You're hands free. I can carry all my stuff, you know, and I love the versatility. The other one is the reissue. Uh, the reissue, I mean, has definitely become like a top dog within my collection. I love that bag. And I know I can go on and on about it. I'm not going to do that. So the reissue, the other one is the Celine Nano, the luggage tote. This guy is amazing. I love the length that it has uh, with the with the strap. Unfortunately, the strap is not adjustable, uh, but I really like the size and that it actually carries a lot more than people might think. So that guy. And the last one are my minis, whether my Chanel minis, whether it's the uh, the black uh, lambskin, my black caviar, the pink or the red. Um, I often, I mean, I feel like I constantly constantly gravitate towards those bags, you know, because they're small, they pack a punch, and um, I really like the red and the pink because it does add a pop of color to my wardrobe. Uh, but yeah, those, those are my top my top styles, I should say, because uh, as I said before, with the Neverfull, I go for two different prints, and with the minis, there are four different uh, four different ones that I reach for. But uh, <laughs> it was not my intention to leave you guys hanging. <laughs> my apologies. But I would also love to know, what are your top five most used bags at the moment? At the moment, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Mayoletta, hopefully I said that correctly. What are your thoughts about the new Louis Vuitton Wave Camera Bag? Do you think it's worth the price? Do you think it's too trendy or a classic design? I like the white version of this bag, but I'm quite concerned about the possible color transfer and the white interior of the bag. How do you take care of your light colored handbags? Um, all right, so before we get any further, let me insert a picture of the Louis Vuitton Wave Camera Bag right now.
I think this bag has an awesome price point, especially for it being an all leather handbag. It's available in three different colors, the white that you just saw, plus it's also available in the pink and the black. Personally, this bag is not for me, but I like the fact that you have a few different options to go for when it comes to color. And as far as something being worth it, it's really a matter of personal preference because if you do see yourself using the bag quite often, then I think that it's worth it. And uh, I personally find it to be a little bit more on the trendy side versus the classic side, just because it has that multicolor detail to it. So I think that kind of makes it a little bit more fun. And like I said before, a little bit more trendy. Um, now, as far as light colored handbags and how I end up treating them, I don't have too many in my collection, but when I do go to use them, I am very mindful as to the type of clothing that I'm wearing. I try not to wear too much black. I try not to wear, um, too much denim or that has a lot of dye. That way I don't experience that color transfer uh, because that is something to note with any type of light colored handbag, especially when, when it comes to a leather handbag because sometimes that type of material ends up absorbing uh, other dyes a lot easier. And um, I, I mean, I love the white one. I like all three colors. I think that they're beautiful, but I love the white one. I think that the white with the gold hardware makes for an awesome combination, especially for spring and summer, because I think that it adds a type of freshness. It adds a type of lightness to any outfit. Um, I will also have to say that when it comes to white handbags, not all the time, not all the time, but white handbags have a tendency to yellow as time goes by, you know? So if you do, um, when you're wearing it, if you have it for a couple of months or a couple of years, you will notice that the color starts to kind of turn a little bit more yellow. Uh, it depends on the material. Sometimes it might be a little bit more intense, but you will start to see that yellowing happen on the sides. So like I said before, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen to every single white handbag, uh, but that's just something to note that when it comes to that type of color or really when it comes to any light colored handbag, um, it has a tendency to yellow as time goes by. So if you love it, I say, absolutely go for it. Just keep those things in mind. And if that's something that maybe um, kind of uh, deters you from wanting to go for it, I would hold off until you feel comfortable. And if again, you decide to visit it, then by all means go for the handbag. So fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Karen. What are your thoughts on the Chanel reissue 227? Would you consider adding it to your collection? With the Chanel reissue 227, I don't see myself adding it to my collection because I find it to be a little too large. The 227 is in between a maxi and a jumbo. And since I already feel that the jumbo is just a little too large for what it is that I'm looking for, that's why I don't see myself um, ever going for it. I do have the 226. And in my opinion, this works out the best for my lifestyle because it's in between a jumbo and a medium large. So I'm able to carry all of my daily essentials. It is very, very comfortable and I don't find it to be too, too overwhelming. Uh, but I will have to say that if you are looking for a classic bag from Chanel and if you do see yourself carrying a little bit more. I think that the 227 is a great option because you're not limited to just a smaller space or anything like that. Plus for it being an all leather handbag, it is very, very comfortable or just reissues in general. They're not as heavy as some of the other handbags that the fashion house offers, you know, so some of them, you can use them cross body on your shoulder. You can use them for long periods of time without them necessarily digging into your skin, which I think is absolutely amazing. So like I said before, the 227 is personally not for me, but I do appreciate the fact that you're able to fit a little bit more in there without necessarily adding so much weight to the bag, but fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from A7K7, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Noé pouch? I love the fuchsia lining and it looks quite spacious. I'm thinking of using it as a small bag and I've seen that you can add D-rings to the side so you can attach a strap. What are your thoughts on altering the pouch so it can be used with the strap? All right, so before we get any further, let me insert a picture of the Louis Vuitton Noé pouch right now. I love this pouch. I think it is so incredibly beautiful and I agree that fuchsia really ends up popping and uh, I could be wrong. I know it currently retails for $820 here in the States, but I could have sworn that when it first launched, it was like $575 or $625, somewhere around there, right? Maybe I was dreaming, maybe I'm losing my mind, but I think it had a considerable price increase and it's very difficult to find because I remember when it first launched, I also asked my sales associate about it and uh, she, she got in contact with a few other boutiques and nobody had it, you know? So if you got it, I think, uh, I think it is awesome, you know, because it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And normally I'm not too crazy about the whole drawstring thing, but I think it really adds a nice type of an oomph to it, you know? And as far as altering it so that you can use it as a little handbag, I think that's fabulous. Why not? 
why not? If you can add more versatility to something, I think that's great. You know how I feel about versatility. And if you want to use it as a, as a catch-all, as a little mini handbag, as a pouch, if you want to put it on your belt loop, I think that's great because that way you can incorporate it into, you know, into different, uh, into different scenarios and, or into different aspects of your life. So I think it's great, you know, and it does look quite spacious. It's super, super cute. I'm, I mean, I am all about this, uh, this little pouch. And when I was talking to the associate about it, she also said, oh, maybe you can use it as a, as a handbag, you know, because it does have those two little, um, those two little grommets that you can end up adding that strap without it necessarily pulling too much on the material. Uh, so I think, I mean, yes, 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 yes. A million times. Yes. I think that is awesome. If you can add more versatility to it, why not? So fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys. So that does it for Manx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, um, you might see me one more time. I don't know. My schedule is looking a little bit crazy, but I will try my hardest. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two or three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.